is your host, Pitts, Pitts Sports Zone, Bowie TV, Pitts and Push Sports Talk Radio, coming to you live on this beautiful Thursday. Listen, we got a special guest today. Today we got Mr. James Hadnot, HBCU Go Play by Play announcer. How you doing today, sir? Doing excellent. Glad to be here. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you very much. And if you can, uh, James, if you can give a little bit about yourself to the viewers and listeners. Yeah. So um, I do play by play for football, basketball for HBCU Go and kind of got started about two years ago. Um, met Charlie Neal and he provided me with the opportunity to kind of start with the basketball. And then they moved on. They added a, a second football schedule. And so they had the SWAC, of course, and then they added on to kind of the D2, yeah. so AA, SIAC, and uh, they tabbed me as the person to kind of step into that role to kind of take over those games. I was extremely blessed just to have that opportunity, and I've just been rolling with it. I'm, I, I mean, I can, I'm, I smile from ear to ear anytime I talk about it because I'm just so thankful. This is, <laughs> this is what I look for, what I put so much time and effort into doing. And so I'm just super glad and super excited just to get ready for a year or two. When you talk about play-by-play -play announcer, you like that is live and then live in color. Is that something that you've always wanted to do? Yes, really has been because when I started, when I grew up, um, I used to watch sports all the time as most sports fans do, right? Uh, I was a big sports center guy and I didn't realize that the people on sports center were getting paid. Uh, as, as, as naive as it sounds, as a young person, you know, you you just kind of wake up, go downstairs, eat your breakfast, you know, get on the bus, go to school. <laughs> but you're not really worried about everything that's happening in the adult world. And right, and, right, right. Yeah. And then my auntie one time, she was like, you know, if you do something you love, you never feel like you're working a day in your life. And I was just watching people on TV and I'm like, oh, they, there's no way they're working. You know, they, and then I felt like, oh, they get paid to do this. I said, why does everybody want to do this? Yeah. This is the job. And then I went to school. Um, got my first taste of doing play by play, you know, at Syracuse basketball. Um, and I was just Syracuse football and I was just like, oh, now I got to do any, anything to, to do this. This is it. And I got to keep doing this I gotta work to do this. <laughs> and now I'm doing it. So I'm just like I said, super blessed. When you talk about, you know, you said something that your aunt told you, um, you said when it's something that you love, it never feels like you're working. I have never heard it stated that way, but it is so true. Oh no! It, 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 is, it is so true. Yeah, nah. Because when you 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 don't realize a lot of times how much, especially to get to certain points in certain fields, right? You don't know how you don't realize how much work it's going to take to get there. That's why it has absolutely. To, it has to feel like, oh, this is just a part of it. This is a part of the grind. This is a part of the effort that it takes to achieve what I want to achieve. Because if it feels like work, a lot of times you're going to be like, oh, that's too much work. <laughs> Oh, you're going to be like, I don't, I don't even, I could be doing something else with my time. But when you, yeah. it's like, oh, this, there's a goal I'm trying to achieve and this just feels like it. I, I remember when I used to have, yeah. to, um, I used to have to carry luggage. We used to put a TriCaster in a, in a piece of luggage and take that from uh, you to venue, take it to the football venue, took it to the, uh, to the basketball uh, venue, take it to the baseball stadium. And it was like, to somebody on the outside world, it could be like, oh, that seems like that's too much. But to me, it was like, this is what we got to do. We got to do what we got to do. And, you know, we're going to do these games and we're going to get these reps. And, you know, here we are. So, like I said, it's, it's a part of my testimony. And I, I mean, I, I'll share that story all over and over again because <laughs> it makes it that much sweeter as well in the end. Absolutely. And not only that, it's funny when you talk about the the day to day and the nuances when it comes to a job and a lot of the things that, you know, we may complain about. But it, when it's something that you love, you know, as you was talking, you know, when I'm out um, at Morgan State or Bowie State, you know, it's one of those things where time seems like it goes by fast. Oh, absolutely. It, like there's none of that. There's never a moment when I'm out there and I'm looking at my clock like, man, I'm still here. Or man, it's been a long day because the passion, one, of the sport and two, to just to be able to feel like I'm a part of it, like I'm playing a part, even though I'm not on the field, I'm not playing in regards to wins and losses. But when it comes to getting that content, when it comes to getting the videos or the photos or the interviews out there, I enjoy those hard, hard, wholeheartedly. So I do understand what you mean when you say when it's something that you love, you never feel like you're working. Oh no, it's it's I can I can have I have so many stories just about it. And like I was I was doing a I think a six overtime basketball game and I was just like I overtime, like I could be here all night. Like 
keep going. You know? it, just, it, it didn't matter that uh, you know coaches are on the sidelines, they pulling their hair out. They got you know you show the kids in the stands, they done fought, felt right. up, everything like that. I, when the game was over, I was like, I could do five more minutes. You know, it's just like it just feels like it's everything right. in that moment, and that's another reason why I play yeah. by play. So fun because you're there, you're you're narrating the stories, and same thing like you said, right? When you're at Bowie State or at Morgan State, you're telling somebody's story. These these students, these student athletes, these uh, people that attend these universities, they um, their stories deserve to be told. And so, just as same way we're telling Absolutely. stories, uh, we're telling stories uh, during a football game or a basketball game. We're, we're telling stories uh, all over the all over the place. So that's that's what I do it for. Before we jump into uh, HBCU Go schedule and everything that you guys have going on, I, I just want to uh, get your take. Two, two, two takes. One, who is or is there a play-by-play -play announcer that you looked up to and said they inspired me to want to do this? Oh, absolutely. Um, Gus Johnson, Mark Jones, and then Sean McDonough uh, all have their different parts of their – um, their repertoire that I really take from. So whether it's Mark Jones and Gus Johnson and their ability to be themselves to the verb is that they use is going to be different than the guys yeah. you're going to see uh, throughout other broadcasts. And so um, just the confidence that they can Absolutely. bring themselves out with uh, really always stuck out to me. And then Sean McDonough, who is a Syracuse alum, he, he's very ta He's a tactician when it comes to what he does. He's, He's it seems like he's always there for the big moment. Um, he is just when it comes to certain games, you're going to hear his voice. And so he would be um, just kind of if you have the you got to have the flavor, you got to have the flair. But you also have to have that that tactical uh, aspect yeah. of play by play as well. And so I like to marry the two. And so I could, you know, in the moment, you got to be able to be able to exercise and elevate the moment. But you also have to have yeah. fun with that moment as well. As a play-by-play -play announcer for any sport, do you think that it's necessary for the play-by-play -play announcer to have some sort of knowledge um, as re in regards to playing that sport or just have a knowledge of the sport? You, you have to have a knowledge of the sport, playing the sport. You then you really just lean on your analysts because there are – we just had the Olympics, right? And right. there are people that are never going to play ping pong at a – at, at, a, at, at, a, at a certain level, right? But there is an analyst who knows ping pong, knows more about ping pong than anybody on the face of the planet, right? You know, so right. you just have to be able to elevate your analyst, right? You have to know enough yeah. about the, the who's and the what's to be able to elevate the analyst so they could tell you the why. And a lot of times, especially on TV, um, the analyst is really the star of the show anyway, because they're the ones that are, describing the why they're telling what you're seeing and why it's happening in that way yeah job to know about the players know about the teams know about the records and you can know that about any sport and that's why i'm, I'm, yeah. I'm that i've done so many sports whether it's a volleyball you could drop me in on a volleyball game or a soccer game or a softball Ooh, game okay because you know i have a enough knowledge of it to be able to explain it right. and share it but then when it's time to talk about why this person did this here and they went there, right? That's when I got to, I got to let the analyst uh, show some love to the analyst and let them, let them do their thing. <laughs> Give me a highlight moment or a surreal moment when you got to a point where you said, I am, I have arrived into the dream that I've dreamt of for years now I get to walk into it and just have fun with it. Hmm. It would honestly have to be HBCU Go. And this is not a cliche. This is not anything, you know, just because that's the home. <laughs> it's because, you know, in radio, um, a lot of times I was the one driving, you know, to go maybe three hours away. And I'm losing money on gas uh, because I, right. I, I get paid a certain amount and then I'm losing money on gas. Got to go back home. Right. Or um, when I was working in TV and I was going um, and covering um, 
whether it be the Cowboys and everything like that. And it was that was extremely fun. And I and I was able to uh, kind of go into these places where I had seen on TV or I watched on TV and I was like, oh, I'm there. Right. But to have the opportunity to put the headset on, have the monitors in front of me to be on site and to just let it let loose. That was like, oh, wow, this is what we wanted to do, um, because I when I was a little bit younger, two years prior to ever doing anything with HBCU Go, I got the opportunity to do a game for FC Dallas. Very thankful to Mark Followill, okay. voice of, the former voice of FC Dallas, voice of the Mavericks. He helped me get that opportunity. And that was my first time being on TV regionally. And that was my first time I was at okay. a venue, had them had the monitors in front of me and got to do a game. And but that was just a one off. Right. And so it was like, this is where we're trying to be. How do we get back here? And because now with HBCU Go, this is going to be my second season for football. Prayerfully, we get to do some basketball. It'll be my third season for basketball. It's like now it's being consistent. Now we have yeah. gotten to exactly the consistency that we're looking for. And in regards to arriving, of course, we want to continue to do as as much as possible. I'm not going to you know, close off the blessing that the Lord has for me. But stepping into that yeah. first step of it would definitely be HBCU Go and being able to do these games. Absolutely. And before we jump into now, we jump into some HBCU Go information. I want to uh, I want to play a PR release video. Right. And I want you to walk me through it um, afterwards and okay. talk a little bit more about it. And it starts this Saturday, uh, August 24th. So let me go ahead and queue up the video. And then once the video is done, you can delve more into it and we can elaborate on that as well. For sure. From Atlanta, Georgia and around the HBCU landscape, it's the 2024 HBCU Go Sports kickoff show. Join Charlie Neal and our expert crew as we preview the upcoming football season featuring the Black College Football Hall of Fame induction ceremony, including our own Antoine Bethay. It feels good to represent the Mecca. Along with the rich culture and traditions of HBCUs. The HBCU Go Sports Kickoff Show premieres Saturday, August 24th, noon Eastern, 11 Central. One, I definitely got to give a shout out to my guy, Antoine Bethea. Um, I caught up with him at the uh, HBCU Legacy Bowl um, in New Orleans at Tulane Stadium. Um, I got the pleasure, had the opportunity to um, interview him. Um, and, you know, when you watched him, like I watched him his whole NFL career. Yes. And when when I talk about the dynamic player that he was and then to like be able to stand side by side with him and have a conversation, like that to me was so monumental. And then to find out that he was being inducted into the Black College Hall of Fame was so surreal. So shout out to Antoine Bethea, shout out to Mo, uh, Ms. Moten, uh, shout out to uh, Mr. Curtis Samuels, uh, President HBCU Go TV. Can't wait to get him back on for another episode. But when we talk about the August 24th HBCU Go kickoff, take us through the events of everything that would be taking place that would be happening on that Saturday. Yeah, kickoff show is going to be super fun because we do a lot of previewing for the upcoming year. So uh, I got the pleasure of going to the CIAA. Uh, media day and talking with you know coach alvin parker and coach frazier and some of the different coaches uh within that league and coach jackson you know and uh, really just kind of previewing what to expect for the upcoming year went to the siac media day um and, and interviewed those coaches those players as well charlie and company um made sure to go to the swac and we had people at the MEAC, and so um just really getting a holistic view of everything to expect for um, college football at the HBCU level. And then um, also there's going to be a, a look back to some of the uh, recap from last year. And I mean, one of the best games that I remember was all the people that filled in uh, to Lanier Stadium or Lanier Field uh, at Virginia State for Virginia State, Virginia Union. And I mean, there was over, I think 10, it was over 10,000 people there. It was wow. It was Bumping. You talking about a, but that was that was a ball game. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm oh like man, you talking about two great teams, Jada My, Jada Bias. Oh man, Virginia State pulling off the. Listen, uh, when you said out, when I said out loud, and then I think about this upcoming season, it gets me even more excited because 
now that there is no divisions in the CIAA because everything that transpired with St. Augustine, now it's really the margin of error is slim. It's very going to be very tight in the league. And so I think back to that game because, of course, this year it's going to be on the campus of Virginia State. But last year that, that Virginia Union-Virginia State matchup was – one to write home about and then even um, <laughs> that i'm really excited about even this year is Bowie state gonna play on fayetteville state and that down in fed down in north carolina i am just oh my gosh can't wait just because of the history that's there at the championship level right i mean yeah so yeah we're gonna get into all of that. <laughs> we're gonna get into all of that during the during the during the kickoff show, and then also kind of look back at some of the big moments from last year, and then especially talking and previewing and really just highlighting Antoine Bethea and what he means to not only uh, black college sports but just to the NFL, what he means to college sports in general. Um, and I remember him telling me about his um, making it to the NFL moment and. Then when we did uh, one of my favorite stories from just our time and preparing for last season, when it was his first year doing some of the, the commentating, uh, we pulled up a game, an old game and it was Colts versus Patriots. Right. And he's on the field. And I, and I set it up that way to make sure like it was going to be easier for him to kind of remember things. But I didn't know this. We do the first drive and he picks off Tom Brady. And I'm like, wow, like his first oh, his first pick, his first career pick. I think was picking off Tom Brady and it was just like, wow, he picked off like in this game and he's, I'm literally about to do games with him. Like this is, you talk about moments, just like this, this is a moment yeah. for me. Um, yeah. you know, like one of his earlier picks in his career, like just picking off Tom Brady. So it was like, wow. And so all of that in regards to just highlighting what he means and what he's done, uh, that's going to be a part of the kickoff show as well. So make sure everybody tunes in. Yeah, I'm I'm excited uh, for this year for the CIAA. I'm interested to see how it plays out now since the uh, divisions have merged into one. Um, so like I was saying earlier, you know, losing to um, a Fayetteville or Winston-Salem um, last year would not have had the same type of ramifications that it would have on a, a Virginia Union or a Bowie or a Lincoln in that manner because now they're all absolutely playing in conference or in, you know, so every game that they play within each other is a win-win. There are no margin for errors. So I'm looking at, I'm, I'm actually excited to see how that play out. Um, and I'm all, and I'm also excited to see Isaiah from Lincoln. I want to see um, the steps, um, see if he could take the, the next steps that he take because, you know, he came in as a freshman and was dominating, right? And he has, he has, is, he kept, the ceiling kept raising for him. So I'm excited to see what this year looked like because I think now with everything being thrown in like it is, it it the playing field doesn't feel – it feels feels even. Everybody has the same amount of games. Everybody knows that whether I'm playing Winston-Salem or whether I'm playing uh, Livingston, I, it's a win-win it's – a, it's a must-win game. So I'm excited mm -hmm. to see that. Yeah, and I think that just adds to every match, right? That's what we say about – that's what we love about college football, that every game matters, right? And, you know, when it comes to a league um, that at times can be a one-bit league when it goes to that that next step, that NCAA tournament, um, of course, that's going to yeah. play a part in it too, right? Because now um, these teams not yeah. only want to play that CIAA championship, but they also want to play for the big championship as well. They want to get a chance to get into the tournament and show themselves against other teams – um, throughout the country and so now you gotta it, it's almost you you don't want to find yourself losing games early in the season you don't want to find yourself dropping games because like you said if you lost if you dropped a game to another team outside of your comp i'm not outside of your division it was like oh okay we could still find a way into the championship game because we got yeah. to handle this in our division but now yeah saying the same thing, you know, multiple times, every matchup matters. Every matchup counts the same. And it's going to be a, it's going to be a doozy for sure. Oh, how, I mean, um, Grambling State and the SWAC. What are your thoughts about the SWAC and who do you see, who are you most looking forward to seeing? Well, in the SWAC, I, Definitely, of course, think about 
of Florida A&M. And, you know, they're the reigning champions for a reason. Um, they're going to be on the new um, – there's going to be some – they've had some changes, of course. And so I think them – they're the team to beat and probably going to be the team to beat. Um, I really do like Alabama A&M um, because they bring okay. back um, – wide receivers and that offense is always such a good offense um that they they've been yeah. consistent offensively um over the course yeah, i mean they they have been i think top two offensively in the swag for like three of the last four years or for the last five years and so when you can especially now in this day and age when you can move the ball um you're going to be successful and for grambling state it's they're trying to get back to where they want to be. I mean, they, 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 they have such a great history. And I think that they're trying to get back there and be excited to see early on yeah. in the season, if they can start to, you know, build things up Then they should put themselves in a the position to hopefully challenge for the swag. Absolutely. Um, one thing that you're looking forward to this year and, when I say looking forward to it, something that you're looking forward to do to probably kind of um, something that you did last year that you say, you know what, I want to work a little bit more on this and try to do this a little differently. Is there that one thing? And if so, which can you share it with us? Yeah, I think personally, um, personally, I feel like I can do well in, in big moments, right? I think that's what takes, you know, certain play by play broadcasters to another level um, is if you can, if you can accentuate the big moment, then that's, what's going to put you in a good position to be yeah. successful. Long term. But not every game, you know, a game is um, has a, only a couple of big moments, right? So in those, right. in those, in those smaller moments or in those moments when you can tell a better story or add something in about a player, um, that's what I'm really going to be working on personally this year is because there's so okay. many different stories to talk about in regards to the players. Um, uh, one that I remember um, in regards to like talking with Coach Gibbs, uh, who's at Fort Valley State, I asked him about when was it taking a great running back, right? He has, a, he has some good running backs upcoming this year. And when is the right time to bring that in about his, what he knows as a running back and then to talk about uh, this running back here. Or for Jada Byers, right? I talked to Coach Parker about Jada and about him. You know, was it ever a question if he was going to move on, right? You know, they they finished the goal of winning a championship, uh, getting to the CI Daily Championship, winning that championship. He's done everything. He's done everything possible you could do at the Division II level, leading the entire, you know, uh, country in rushing. And so, um, yeah, he would be the prime person to take a step and try to find something at a lower division D one, or even maybe at a mid major D one and kind of find some time. But, you know, coach Parker said that was never a question. He's committed to playing here. He wants to be here. He wants to uh, go back to back. And so, you know, when in a game, is that a good time to bring that story up about his commitment to uh, Virginia union and, and what he wants to be moving forward um, and just yeah. how he goes about his business. And so, or even Dalen Lee, right? When is a good time to bring up the story about him uh, and the fun that he has outside of football, right? And how he is, is making it big, it make, it's making it bigger than football for his teammates. And so when can I tell those stories and get those in? That's going to be something that I'm working on personally um, throughout these games because those stories are important. Yeah, yeah. I I wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly agree, and I can't wait, man, because I can't wait to see my – I can't wait to see them good old Bowie Bulldogs, and I can't wait to see my man Ferguson Parker, Jordan Morris. Man, there's so many. Shawan Lewis is back. I I, I just can't wait. Mikhail is Devin. Listen, it's, it's going to be a very interesting CIAA year, and, you know, I'm looking to see if the Bulldogs can, you know, get back to the top of the – the throne where they've been so long and get back to that, that bulldog, you know, we take it all tradition. So it's going to be exciting. I can't wait. Um, Hopefully I'll get to see you at one of the games. I'm not sure if you'll be at the Bowie and the Bluefield state, yep. which is uh, I know that game is a homecoming for Bowie, but I know you guys will be there. We will be there. And so hopefully we get a chance to connect and everything like that. And for coach Jackson, he's been so gracious every time we go up there and just kind of, talking about uh, what it looks like uh, for him because he's big on the standard, right? And so although they've looked 
good at times, you know, going back over the past couple of years. And, you know, he's he's also not one to give any excuses. Right. And so absolutely standard, standard is the standard. He's a former player there. So he knows what it takes to be successful. And I mean, he came in the media day with the lock and with the chain. Right. So we, we know we know how that. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, he's standing on business. <laughs> absolutely. We, we know how he's coming. And we yeah. know how he's coming, what he brings for the entire team and that. You know, just the locks, right? The chain links, how that that family mentality, and he for him to kind of mention just how he really feels like this is where they're at right now. And that was just in the preseason. I too am extremely excited to see what the Bulldogs are going to be doing this upcoming year. And I've been told that Bowie Homecoming is one to remember as well. Uh, and so that's Ooh, what we, that's what we said. Uh, 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 So I'm excited about that as well. Listen, um. When you get there, or when I get there, I would make it my intentionally my well, I would make it my duty to come and grab you because at homecoming, I like to go in a crowd and I like to, you know, get the fans route and get some footage of the fans and do interviews. I'm going to take you past the tailgate squad. And the tailgate squad, shout out to the tailgate squad. I promise you, you will not be disappointed, man. So I look forward to it, man. I look forward Absolutely. to meeting you personally, but I also look forward to uh, just, just growing and, and keeping this going and keeping this connection and this relationship and expounding and building on it. So I thank you for taking the time to join me today. I thank you for, you know, all that you shared. I, I thank you for sharing your journey and also sharing that the journey's not done, right? There's always something that we can build on. So anytime we feel like we've hit our ceiling, then we're not challenging ourselves more to do something. But because in today's world, you know, you can become creative with anything and, and make it another level of it still goes together. Absolutely. I, I think I appreciate that. And that's what it's all about. Right. Um, my one of my favorite statements, one of my favorite quotes comes from one of my God sisters. And it's pushed me from basically high school to now and it's you can't complain about everything on your plate if the goal is to eat <laughs> if, you, if the goal is to eat so you know wanting to continue to keep my plate full continue to do as much as i can continue to grow and continue to uh just kind of break like you said those through those ceilings um that is that's what it's all about so i appreciate the time i look forward to continually connecting with you and like yeah. I said, thank you. You're feel, feeling very blessed right now. So thank you. Yes, sir. Everyone, James had not HBCU go play by play announcer. It's going down. CIAA, get ready. It's about to be a very beautiful season. Again, shout out to Antoine Bethay and congratulations. I can't wait, man. Y'all know what it is. Bowie TV, Pitt Sports Zone, Pitts and Foot Sports Talk Radio. It's going down. Listen, football season ain't, the games haven't even started yet. We just getting started. We Stay tuned. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of y'all Thursday.